Perfect. We are Hi. like that. So, Sarah, how are you today? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing great. Thank you. I mean, what better way to start an epic, an epic Friday with an epic guest? Too. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I feel like it's going to be an epic year. 2022 is going to be an amazing year, and I'm really excited. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. So welcome to the show. It is so cool and awesome to have you here. Before we start, I have to give you a proper welcome, you know, proper intro for someone as talented as you. So before we start, so if you have to tell my episode before, you know exactly what it, what is about to happen. If not, that's even better because then I can surprise you. So, yeah. <laughs> I love, it. I love, it. love it. Love it. <laughs> Such now, a great way to be introduced. <laughs> right, right. I mean, of course, that at some point we're going to have live audience, but you know, we're still working on it. So, exactly. Exact baby steps. <laughs> there you go. Baby steps, indeed. Now, starting with the whole interview, now tell me how your modeling career started. Um, so I started back when I was 14, um, like a year ago, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and, uh, I went to modeling school when I was 14, okay. um, which was back in the nineties. And back then, I mean, trying to get into the modeling industry was when you had like Kate Moss and you had all these women that were like six feet tall mm. and you know, skinny, skinny, and um, and it was really difficult back then um, yeah. because, you know, I'm 5'5", five, five and I have a different look, and um, I went into, I took acting classes, and when I was about 26, 27, mm -hmm. I moved out to Vegas, um, and I did some acting and modeling there and went to L.A. for a couple of years, did some acting and modeling, Um, and, um, I came back to the Northeast, um, for quite a while and got out of everything. And then about three years ago, um, one of my friends had a friend that was a photographer and she knew I loved photography and modeling. And she said, you guys should meet. And it just kind of snowballed from there. I met her, my friend, Jen, mm. and, um, She introduced me to another photographer and I just kept working and studying and, um, you know, everything I could. I, I was always into photography also, okay. so that was, I loved both sides of the camera. I, I was always taking pictures of other things and people and different things, so I always had a desire for that. Okay, that's cool. So basically starting from the bottom, now you're here. Yes. Yes, I have been, uh, I've been working my way up. <laughs> There you go. And what were some of the challenges that you had? I mean, besides the, the one you mentioned because of the height, but like what other challenges do you have when you were starting with your, uh, with your modeling career? Um, so some challenges I've faced, and I think uh, from more taking it seriously the last couple of years, mm -hmm. um, one being obviously my height because I'm 5'5", five, five, and a lot of models are 5'8", or, or taller. Um, I also, as you can see, I have tattoos and, um, I would say, I would say more like five years ago or more, um, it was kind of frowned upon on mm -hmm. the industry, but I've seen a lot of, um, diversity in modeling and clothing lines and people, uh, having more models that have tattoos and piercings and, and different things. I feel like these days, um, things are becoming more acceptable. Yeah. Um, also, um, you know, I think ageism, which is coming up a lot now, is that, you know, a lot of people look to these young teenagers or early 20s and, you know, getting into this industry. And yeah. I now am really making headway in my modeling career in my 40s. You know, I'm in my 40s, which most people don't <laughs> think that. Um, you know, I'm I'm shorter, I'm older, I have tattoos, and 
I have to say I have just I'm so focused and I've been rocking it and just you know those challenges which most people would see as a challenge yeah. um, against you I feel like is for me because it just gives me motivation to prove that I can do it okay I love it I love it and do you remember what was your first modeling job yes actually my first kind of real modeling job um yeah. i was living in vegas at the time mm -hmm. and um back then um jenny mccarthy was filming a tv show at the palms uh hotel and casino and yeah. i had met some producers from e-television and i did some modeling for the tv show um we did some stuff out of the pool and did some stuff so yeah my first uh My first modeling gig was for e-television, um, and I remember a friend had called me up from back in Boston and said, I just saw you on e-television walking out of a pool. <laughs> that is super cool. And like out of the places that you have been for a photo shoot, which one you enjoy the most? It's funny because I, I really enjoy like urban settings, like downtown, hustle and bustle. Um, But I would have to say, there is absolutely nothing better than a sunrise shoot in the summer. Mm. And the sun is coming up and it's so quiet and the weather is beautiful and you have the ocean there. And it is one of the most amazing, beautiful experiences to just be shooting this amazing photography with the sun rising behind you and having the ocean. I would have to say there's, as much as I love urban settings, there's nothing yeah. better than that. I love it. I love it. And which photo shoot has been, yeah, like the most difficult to make? I mean, did you have difficult either because of the weather or any kind of issues here? I would say difficult. There was one that um, I did. Um, there was a style shoot I did and there was multiple photographers. Um, it was kind of set up where different, there was models inside and then I was outside and they were coming to, they both all had like 30 minute sessions to shoot um, and learn photog different photography skills. And it was about three or four hours and mm. I had on this very light gown mm. and it was freezing outside. Mm. <laughs> And I was outside for about three or four hours and with very little on, like a kind of sheer dress. <laughs> okay. And you just have to go with it and you have to smile and you're like, I'm warm, I'm warm. So the shoes where it's, especially being in the Northeast where it's like, you know, 20 degrees out and you have to pretend that it's, you know, 70. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. But that's all in the acting. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. It's all, but yeah, it's all about the art. Yep, you just gotta, you know, the show must go on. <laughs> the show must go on, yeah. I can, I can, I can understand that. And yep. like, uh, which photo shoot has been like the funniest one you ever did? The <laughs> one of the funniest ones. So, um, anybody that has modeled or done shoots where you're, or done acting or whatever, where you're, um you know have multiple outfits um i was shooting in downtown portland and i had to change clothes and mm -hmm. i've mastered changing clothes in public because you gotta you know change and be conspicuous yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. but i was like completely changing my outfits like in the middle of the city and there's people just like i don't know if they thought i was crazy or like yeah you know what I was doing but I just couldn't stop it was so awkward and so funny but then I we just couldn't stop laughing my photographer friend Joel and I were just just couldn't stop laughing because people are just looking at us like we're crazy I'm just like changing my outfit and I'm right in the middle of downtown <laughs> and there's like crowds of people walking by but you know like I said you gotta do what you gotta do but yeah it was It was hilarious because I think people thought we were crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that. And what is your approach on modeling? I mean, how you usually prepare? Do you have like a go-to song or um, yeah, like a go like a ritual, let's say, or like a go-to something in order to kind of set your mind for the photo shoot? You know, um, I feel like 
with it kind of depends on the theme that I'm going for mm. um, and what kind of music I'll play like uh, sometimes I do listen to a lot of jazz I like a lot of French jazz music um, if it's like an urban setting I'll do like hip-hop or something more upbeat but okay. um, preparing it's just um, you know yeah getting that that right music in um, making sure you're sleeping the night before and usually for shoots um, I love to collaborate with people so we it's I do I'm involved in everything from picking locations to styling to choosing what we're gonna do studying um, studying how we're gonna pose how we're gonna do things so you know it's it's that's the thing with working with a lot of local photographers is you get to collaborate so I'm involved in everything everything planning leading leading up to that point so okay. yeah it's it's picking everything so it's it's kind of putting everything together so I get super excited about creating and what the shots are going to do um and how we're going to portray everything so mm. um but yeah I think music is most important because it's getting you into that mindset of what totally. kind of character you're going to portray totally and like how you usually takes um uh, a photo shoot I mean the, the, like what is like the yeah like let's say like the standard time for it I mean I would say most shoots um, are like two to three hours um, okay. but that also depends on you know where you're shooting location how you're getting there um, you know my friend Gavin and I um, we shot on Peaks Island um, which is off the coast of Maine so we mm. took a fair we got on the ferry we took the ferry out there then we walked like a mile in to the location yeah. so you know it's uh, sometimes it's you know just just getting there so you really have to prepare um, and then if it's freezing cold out your shoots are gonna be a lot shorter I have a yeah. shoot next week coming up and um, we're gonna shoot really quickly because it's gonna be freezing cold so we're gonna keep it to like 30 to 45 minutes <laughs> yeah of course yeah especially right now with the whole uh, crazy weather I can totally understand that oh yeah I can totally understand that and like what do you usually do after a photo shoot I mean is there like a like an activity or something that you like as soon as the photo shoot is done you are you're doing that activity I would I would say the thing that I mostly do is eat something <laughs> because oh. it's like during the shoot because your nerves and your you're just go 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 and I'll have like little snacks before and then it's like going so afterwards it's like because you're so pumped up and you you put so much effort to it so I'm usually I'm usually exhausted and hungry so the first thing I will do is either go somewhere and get something to eat or come home and make myself a nice big meal mm -hmm. um, okay. and just throw in a good movie so it's just kind of decompressing so it's like the before is like the music to kind of like build yourself up and then I'll put on some good like relaxing music eat some good food yeah, just yeah. kind of nourish, nourish myself and mm -hmm. kind of revamp myself I love it and is there like a is there like a go-to meal Hmm. I mean, I I eat super healthy, um, so I tend to go for like nice big salads, but like full of stuff like avocados and onions and proteins and um, goat cheese and just yeah. kind of throwing like everything you can in there um, to just kind of fill yourself up and nourish yourself. And then always gonna have chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> mm. gotta, no. gotta throw the bad in with the good <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i agree on that that is super cool that is really awesome you know i find it i mean at first i was i was uh i i found it interesting for example uh with uh with some of the models that, 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 that i've interviewed that usually they will go after for a shoot go eat something like like that like that so that so that caught my attention but then i mean uh later on i started to understand like makes sense i mean after being standing up for a for a bunch of hours and especially for example the ones that they're like promoting like any sports brand that you kind of need to force the muscle to kind of look make you look natural you know like those ones usually get like get the get the chance to be like super tired because regardless that you're not moving 
you have to make it look like you are actually moving. So forcing the oh, yeah. kind of thing, you ended up super tired. And also, like another 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 thing that we're saying is that basically it was kind of um like a like a little spoil, you know. After this, after this hard session, why not getting a pizza or some chicken nuggets or burgers, you know, stuff like that. Exactly, and you know, to be honest, it's like even like poses where it you kind of look like you're just kind of sitting or doing stuff. I mean, you're contorting your body and yeah. all because you have to get the right lighting and this and that and moving totally. and it's like it's actually really physical like some people think oh yeah you just stand there it's like you gotta have everything right you gotta have your body mechanics right you gotta have the lighting right moving mm. capturing that that spot so you're and it's like studying like how your body works which way is gonna look better yeah. i mean like i was saying earlier i'm only five five but I know how to move my body and camera angles, so I look a lot taller. So in a lot of my pictures, people think I'm like 5'9", five 5'10", five because mm. it's knowing how to maneuver yourself with okay. the camera, with the lighting, to make yourself look a certain way, um, which is like super cool. And especially if you're doing clothing and stuff too, if you're doing a clothes night or anything it's it's how can you move your body to make those clothes look the best possible way that that you can so it's it's mental it's physical there's yeah so you're afterwards you're mentally and physically exhausted so yeah it's nourishing yourself is the most important thing there you go i love it i love it and like what advice could you give to those who are recently started modeling The best advice I can give is study, 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 mm. is learning. I have been studying this since I was, like I said, 14, is um, even watching those model shows. I mean, as much as people yeah. like to make fun of it, those America's Next Top Model and shows like that is they're, they're teaching these women how to pose, how not to pose, how to look, how to use your eyes. because. If you have nothing going on, if you have dead face, like your there's not your pictures are, are nothing. Yeah. So you it's like studying poses, studying fashion, studying photography. I've studied photography and lighting and angles. Um, also, just working hard, getting getting good pictures, mm. um, learning how to reach out to people, finding local photographers and and other people that are looking to build their work and build their. Um, you know, build their portfolios, be diverse because, yeah. you know, don't just go with the same look all the time. You have to be diverse in, in what you're doing and be open, be willing to work with people. Um, but also my best advice too is, is stick to your values. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I've always said, and, and there's people, and, and I totally, Like there's people that do super artistic nude photography and yeah. they're so wonderful and so talented. Um, but for myself, it's just not for me. Um, you know, I just don't want to do it. And I just let people know right off the bat, you know, I don't, I don't do that. And if there's something that you're not comfortable with, always speak up, don't. you know, don't, don't feel like you have to compromise yourself and your values to, and to, you know, be something in a career, you know, stick to who you are and what you believe yeah. in. Um, that, that's the most important thing too, is be confident in who you are, what you're looking for, what you want, but also be willing to be open to creative ideas and mm -hmm. being different characters. Okay. All right. I like it. Now, if you could describe your career on a drink, which one would you pick? Mm. On a drink, okay. I would describe my career as red wine hmm. because I feel like at my age and my 40s now is that I'm getting better with age and red wine gets better with age. And I just feel like as I get older and wiser, and learning more i feel like i feel like i haven't even hit my best years yet so i still yeah. feel like i'm that red wine in the bottle that's mm. waiting to be cracked open mm. <laughs> okay and it's just as soon as that time is right uh, 
that bottle's gonna get popped open and it's gonna be amazing. So I'm that mm -hmm. fine bottle of red wine just waiting. It just marinating. <laughs> that is amazing and that classic like it. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I can go for a glass of red wine. <laughs> that sounds good. You know what? Actually yeah. after this I definitely gonna get a drink. Yep. <laughs> sounds like a plan. Now, one more video. You know, we all have those days in which we just feel like crap. You know, we don't want to continue what we're doing. We could, we we think that it's been kind of a waste of time. That uh, that is not that is not taking us anywhere. So, like what get, like getting inside this toxic bubble? Let's say it's super easy, right? But what gets you out of it? You know, what motivates you in order to just be out of this toxic bubble and just continuing following your path here? Yeah. Um, what motivates me the most is. I want to inspire other people that maybe think that they're not good enough or they don't fit the mold or they're too old and also I you know I've I've talked about it you know on my social media in the past I I'm an abuse survivor I also fight Lyme disease um, yeah. which has been a struggle the last couple of years yeah. and I have to fight through um, a lot of stuff with that getting back into fitness after getting Lyme disease was a real struggle and yeah. I've also also fought you know mental health stuff depression and anxiety and I got to a point in my life where I don't want to I don't want to be a victim and I want to overcome and I want to inspire other people that that think you know I can't do this I can't do that I'm too this I'm too that and that's not true it's not true no matter what you've been through how old you are what you look like what your challenges are if you believe in yourself and you want a dream you can do it because someone else out there and i heard this the other day if somebody else has accomplished it that means it's possible to be done and even if someone else hasn't accomplished it that still doesn't mean that you can't do it be a pioneer be the first one I've had doors closed in my face because of certain ways and I just say, well, fine, I'll find another way to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what motivates me every day to say, you know what, no matter how many challenges I face, every challenge is just gonna add another log to my mm -hmm. fire and just light my fire even more to, to motivate myself. So mm -hmm. when I think of those days, I don't want to do something. I think about the other people that are thinking the same thing and I want them to believe that they can do it also. I love that, Tara. That is super inspiring here. That is super inspiring. And the fact that you have been through so many stuff, but you still, you're still standing, you know, that is super inspiring. And also I think that it teaches us a lesson that when you have something that you want to do something, it is possible to make it. But of course, there's, there's going to be a lot of moments in which you're going to be either questioning yourself or maybe just you are not are in a bad situation at the moment, you know, but the fact that you have been through that and, and continuing and then and you have yeah you have to get out of that of those situations the most epic way possible that is really cool yeah and the one thing that i i want to say to people because some people they have these big dreams and you know people try to go after these big goals all at once and then they fail and they get discouraged yeah. and it's taking small steps like extremely small steps if you can say oh well i'm gonna you know, I'm going to work out twice this week because I, I have this goal that I want to get to. And you, you do that and you accomplish little things. The more small things that you accomplish is going to increase your motivation to get better. You know, don't say, well, I'm going to move to California and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then, oh, well, I don't, don't think about what you don't have. Say, okay, I'm going to save $20 this week and put it towards what I want to do. And when you do that, then that motivates you to save twenty dollars the next week. You know, just mm -hmm. start write down small goals, and every small goal that you accomplish, that's gonna make you. It's like the ladder effect. Like you can't just jump to the highest, you know, totally. rung on a ladder. You gotta climb it up. So just start small, or even take with the phones now, and and what we have, you can take pictures of yourself. Take pictures of yourself if that's something you want to do and just learn just learn on your own and then you know there's like i said study 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 
watch motivational speakers, yeah. listen to podcasts. It it really does make a difference. But you know, don't don't give up if there's something that you really want that badly. I love that, Sarah. That is epic. That is super epic. That is badass question. <laughs> amazing. amazing but yeah it's true at the end of the day if it is your dream go go after it but of course that uh, be sure that it's gonna i mean be prepared that it's gonna be a lot of moments in which things might not work out or things might not be working the way you want to but not because i mean one of the things that i've been that i've been kind of understanding too is that not because something is not working the way you want it to it means that it's wrong you know sometimes you need to pass a moment in your in life to kind of learn from it and just continue moving forward you know Exactly. And and like you said, you were just saying you you have a dream. Sometimes it may not pan out the way that you thought it was going to, but it's all in I remember watching Kobe Bryant speak. Um, mm. you know, God love him, rest his soul, and he was saying it's not about get it wasn't about just getting to the NBA or getting it was that journey of waking up early every day and working out and you know losing sleep and everything that's the part that is the most important that's the best mm -hmm. part is not the end goal it's what you're doing to get there that's the dream right there so you know it's you know just it may not work out where you thought it was going to be but you're going to end up where you're supposed to end up there you go and cool. and no, nothing's a failure no matter how hard you try if you don't get to where you were you're not a failure if you've tried and put the work in because you've learned something from it there you go i love the tarot but it is true it is true and i do hope that more people start to think like that you know so what can i say it's amazing your career is 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 superb here i mean the fact that you have accomplished so many things here and i'm super sure as you mentioned that this is the beginning of a lot of epic stuff coming to pursue keep doing what you do it is super it is super inspiring super amazing i love it basically um and just keep rocking because it is super inspirational and i think what you do it is also um a message here that dreams can come true re uh, regarding age regarding you have uh like a like a yeah like a problem or anything if you want if you want to do something you can make it happen so that is super inspiring what you do make sure you continue rocking because we need people like you we need this exactly people. and this right. is my you know this year my goal is to get into Inked magazine which has been a goal of mine for a long time and um i want to be the first tattooed model in sports illustrated and Let's make it happen i'm just going to i'm just going to keep going and keep going and just rock it and there you go i'm not saying it might happen i'm going to say it will happen i got to put that mindset in and <laughs> there you go i love it i love it but it is true and it's going to happen and it's going to happen to for sure i'm sure of it um But yeah, it's amazing. So, I mean, yeah, it's it, it's a cool. Your career is amazing, and uh, and, and also, I me, mean, Sarah, I want to thank you so 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 much for 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 giving me the time to make this happen. Also, want to thank those who are watching. Thanks so much if you're watching this later here on Instagram yes. or thank watching you, it later, or later on YouTube or listening on Spotify, or Apple Music. Make sure that you're following Sarah on social media. Normally, what I would say is for you to put pause, and then if you are following her, that's perfect. Then it then it's a perfect time to leave a million likes. You know, let's let's make Sarah trendy right now. Let's put hashtag Team Sarah. Let's let's also include Sports Illustrated here. So yeah, let's make it happen. Let's 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 make sure everybody knows about this talent and amazing model. And Sarah, be before I send you off, I need to send you off properly in an epic way. So oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> hey. I love it. Hey, I love it. Keep rocking, keep being amazing, keep being this amazing person you always are. And I'll see you in the next one. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye.